every great story starts with the rush of thrilling gaming action. Handcrafted flavors, eager to please. Getaways for some well-deserved me time. And rewards worth bragging about. If it's a story worth telling, it starts at La Berge Baton Rouge. What's your story? Your favorite season is back, and now's the time you can score savings at the Team Automotive Group. You can sell your vehicle to us, and we'll pay you top value. Or buy here and get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Score VIP service and save at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling And welcome as we start the Thursday edition of the Clarence Buck Show. See, now you're just messing with me, Marty. You're just messing with a brother now. But that's all right. I love you anyway. Here's hoping all is well with you and yours and your little slice of South Louisiana heaven since the last opportunity we had to spend some time with you and yours. As is typically the case, we start today's show with Louisiana news. And the first couple of stories... I would put under the banner of what example are we setting for our kids? A couple of stories recently that really caught my eye and don't bode well for what we're teaching our children. For example, in Napoleonville, a fight there this week resulted in injuries and the arrests of seven people, five of them teenagers. The Assumption Parish Sheriff's Office says that the fight took place after two male suspects forced their way into a home and a fight then ensued. Two adults, Murphy Wesley, 18 years old of Napoleonville, and the homeowner, 37-year-old Ashley Girard of Prairieville, arrested on charges of home invasion, criminal damage to property, and contributing to the delinquency of juveniles. Additionally, a 17-year-old arrested on a charge of battery of a police officer, resisting an officer, disturbing the peace by fighting, and interfering with the law enforcement investigation. It gets better. Two 15-year-olds arrested on charges of disturbing the peace by fighting and resisting an officer. Two 16-year-olds arrested, one of them facing a charge of home invasion, simple criminal damage to property. The other faces a charge of second-degree battery. You can tell a lot about a society, about how it treats its children and its elderly. And... When you have this many juveniles involved in something of this magnitude, it's a fairly safe bet that this is not the last we will hear of them and their engagement with law enforcement in the future. It's a sad commentary, y'all. And as horrific as that story is, there's another. Here in the capital city, after a huge manhunt, 
six suspected armed robbers who law enforcement believes now was targeting the Hispanic community in Baton Rouge. Each robbery involved a group of men in masks robbing Hispanic victims at gunpoint outside their home. The suspects would then, according to media reports, enter the victim's home robbing, quote, any Hispanic victims located inside before fleeing the crime scene. <sighs> if it were just adults, that would be pretty bad. But in this case, 17-year-old, 16-year-old, 18 year old along with the 22 and 30 year old all facing several counts of armed robbery and home invasion now the fact of the matter is this is learned behavior these kids didn't come here with their goal in life to be robbing people of a different ethnicity at gunpoint this is learned behavior and I can only hope that when all is said and done aside from holding the juveniles accountable that the adults that fostered this will be held accountable as well another story that caught my eye yesterday that really broke my heart I'm sure you guys and girls are familiar with the woman out of Texas who was horribly mistreating her children. Two of the teenagers locked in a laundry room, forced to consume their own urine and feces. One of the kids, two of the kids actually, managed to escape, alert neighbors to what was going on. She then, with the rest of her children, fled the state of Texas and of course ended up in Baton Rouge. Well, after being shipped back to Texas and arraigned, during the proceedings, she informed the judge that she is now pregnant with her ninth child. As a conservative, I am one who is staunchly in the favor of keeping government out of our lives as much as possible and particularly out of our bedrooms. But when I see a case like this woman that has so horribly mistreated the children she already has, to now find out while in jail for abuse of children that many of us still have a hard time wrapping our minds around. We find out that she's now pregnant with her ninth child. You know, societists and social workers will tell us that there is a distinct correlation between what you experience as a child and what you go on to be as an adult. When you figure what these children were exposed to, looking down the road, conventional wisdom says expect more of the same from them when they become adults. And tragically, it's you and I that will be left picking up the pieces of these children's shattered lives, you and I will be blessed with the privilege of paying the money for the social services and everything else that these children will need. 40 years old, abusing kids to this nature, and is now pregnant with her ninth child. God bless that baby. Because that child is coming into this world so far behind the eight ball that regular, decent, ordinary folks 
cannot begin to imagine what this child is going to be facing. But you know, one of the things that I love about our society is that there's always room to overcome. I'll never forget on the air, I guess I can say this, uh, at my former employer, Guarantee Media, at Talk 107.3, one day after the son of Derek Todd Lee, serial killer, was arrested on charges violating societal norms. And I made the comment on air that it's a shame no one was able to get that young man, get him out of Louisiana and away from the stigma that his family now shares. Because none of us can imagine what it's like to go to the store and standing in the checkout line, and you look around and you see people whispering and pointing at you. Well, you know who that is, huh? That's the serial killer's son. None of us know what it's like to just step in the driveway at home to wash your car, and as people are driving down the street, you see them pointing at you. So as I said this, the phone in the control room rang, and my producer, as he normally does at the time, answered the phone. And I noticed he put the caller on hold and he's doing this to me in the glass. And I'm saying to myself, I see the phone lines lit. When I finish making my point, I'll take the call. My producer says, no, nah, man, you need to take this call right now. I said to myself, well, I'll get to it. I mean, it's the Clarence Bugs show. When Clarence Bugs decides we're going to take calls, then we take calls. I look up and he's going, no, take the call right now. So I acquiesce. I take the call. Long story short, guy on the other end of the phone says, Clarence, I was driving back to the office and I heard what you said about being the son or the child of a serial killer. He said, man, I want to thank you for what you said. Because people have no idea. Then he said it. My father was a serial killer. It was what we call in the business radio magic. One of the best shows I think I've ever been involved with. I said, your father was a serial killer? He said, yeah. John Allen Muhammad. I said, the DC sniper? He said, yeah. That was my dad. But to show you how things work, he is now a member of the constable's office. He ended up in law enforcement, serving and protecting. And it just goes to show you, when we as a society get involved and take certain things on our shoulders, there's nothing we can't accomplish. There's no life too young or too old to turn around. Many people simply need the opportunity. And as we started the show by saying, they simply need to have the right examples in their lives. Sadly, in these two cases, we have failed these children. Fortunately, however, it's not too late to fix that. First break of today's show. When we come back, I want to talk a little election, election stories. And two, right here in Louisiana, despite everything else going on, proved to me in no uncertain terms, with all our shortcomings, with all our failures, we're still the best there is. We'll talk about that when we continue today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. 
Lowe's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax Tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. The 2022 Mazda CX-5. With iActive all-wheel drive and available turbo engine, it truly ignites the senses. Save on your new CX-5 right now during the season of discovery at Team Mazda. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here, inviting you to come by Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, where we tape the show live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 o'clock. Come by and feast on news, sports, current events, love of God and country, and lots of common sense, along with some of the best barbecue anywhere on the planet. 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Old School Barbecue, home of the Clarence Bugs Show. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Welcome back to the Thursday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, life is a funny thing. If God blesses you to stick around for a while, you see things happen that put in perspective for you certain things in life. We, as Americans, regularly see things that shake our faith in government. Sometimes it shakes our faith in our society as well. But if you are an observant person, you have the ability to look at things, analyze things, come to a reasonable, logical conclusion about what it all means, life has a way of showing you things in places where you would least expect it. The recent elections here in our state, two cases that really confirmed for me why I love my country so much and why our country, in many instances, is the envy of the world because of our election system, as broken as it may be in some instances. But again, many times in life, you find these things in the most unlikely of places. For example, New Roads, Louisiana, small, beautiful town seated around False River. At last count, I want to say it's like just over 4,000 residents in this small South Louisiana city. The mayor there, Cornell Dukes, found himself the, I don't want to say, well, let me, let me rephrase that, found himself the victim of some real negative publicity. Chris Nakamoto, 
as he is so adept at doing, did an investigative series of reports and found out, allegedly, that the mayor had been misusing public funds. An outcry ensued, and on election day, he was voted out. Here's what endeared this story to me. Statewide, only 46% of us chose to take part in the electoral process. In New Roads, 70% of the voters turned out. That is something that to me solidifies where the power in our country was designed to and is supposed to rest. It's with we, the people. The people of New Roads decided we've had enough of this negative publicity, we've had enough of all of this, we're gonna vote this guy out. And they turned out probably the highest number as far as voter participation in the entire state. All because they wanted to voice their displeasure. Tip of the hat to the folks in New Roads because that's what makes this country the greatest there is. Meanwhile, here in Baton Rouge, really weird, strange story that likewise confirmed my confidence in the system. School board member Connie Bernard, I guess I should say embattled school board member. You probably remember the stories where she was accused of, in a real contentious school board meeting, they were talking about renaming Lee High School. Come to find out, the school board member during the debate, on her tablet or cell phone, was online shopping for a couple of hours while the meeting's going on. She's looking at dresses and purses and shoes and all this kind of stuff. And there's a huge outcry. Some board members calling for her to resign. She is also the school board member that got into this fight with teenagers at a neighbor's home and resulted in a big shouting match, uh, potential assault, et cetera, et cetera. So after all of this broke and all of this displeasure was voiced, she decided she was not going to run for re-election. The thing was, her name was already printed on the ballot, so they couldn't take it off. So, on the election day, her name's on the ballot. She got 35% of the vote. So, now she has reversed her stance, saying, well, if 35% of the, of the people voted for me, I need to honor their faith and trust in me by staying in the race for the runoff. You know, I'm a big believer in perception. It's all about, for me, how you choose to look at certain things that will decide ultimately what your decision is on any given issue. It's all about how you choose to look at it. Now, for her part, I can respect you got 35% of the vote. You feel as though you need to honor this 35% of people by staying in the race. But you could also, speaking of perception, look at this from the angle that 65% of the voters said they wanted anybody but you. Yeah, 35% voted for you, but 65% did not. Now, I'm going to leave to you to decide whether or not it's a good or bad thing that Connie Bernard stays in the race. But it occurred to me last night as I was reading the story on this. At the end of the day, old Clarence and anybody else, media, whomever, you can sit there, look at this story, and you can speculate, conjugate, pontificate. But at the end of the day, what I think, as the old folk used to say, 
does not amount to a hill of beans. The only thing that matters is what the people in that district want. That's all that matters. Everybody can have an opinion, and I won't go into the old adage of opinions because y'all already know what that says. Everybody's got one. They all stink. You've heard that before. But what Clarence thinks about this race doesn't matter. Nor should the people who live in that district care what Clarence thinks. Because he doesn't live here. Our kids don't go to school here. And this school board member does not represent his interest. The only thing that matters here is what the voters in that district want. And at the end of the day, I don't want somebody living in another state, living in another city, telling me what I should want where I live. So if I have that opinion about myself and people from other cities and other states, I am then obligated to extend that same courtesy to the people in this school board race. They are the ones who will have to live with their decision. They are the ones whose children will be affected by her decisions. And they are the ones that ultimately are the only ones who opinions matter. Again, just more simple confirmation for me about why our country at least for the time being, continues to be the envy of the free world. This is why people will face burning desert sands to come here. This is why people will swim shark-infested waters to be a part of what we have here. 35% voted for you. 65% did not. But at the end of the day, when the runoff is complete, the people who live there will decide ultimately what they want. I don't know about you and yours, but for me, that's as good as it gets. Speaking of election news, another story that um, broke my heart. And I understand that it is part of the cycle of life. I understand you could make the argument, well, Clarence, you, you're a God-fearing man. You know that God's word tells us when it comes to life, three score and ten, and if by reason of health and strength, four score. For those of y'all that have no clue what I'm talking about, God's word tells us pretty much that you can expect 70 years of life. If you are fortunate, good health, Good circumstances, four score. That's 80 years. We want to send our sincere condolences out to the family of Velma Hendricks. She is the mayor of the small town of Melville and unfortunately died in a car wreck on election day. 84 years young. And by all accounts, a woman that loved the city of Melville and the state of Louisiana. And listen, y'all, I get it. There is nothing I wouldn't give, no amount of money I wouldn't pay to be able to hug my mother or my father just one more time. Because I'm without them now. So I understand particularly for us boomers, this is that, quote, season of life where those that brought us here are now transitioning on. I get all that. But at the end of the day, it's an extra prick in the wound when a mayor at 84 years of age gets killed in a traffic accident on election day. Our thoughts and prayers are with Velma Hendricks' family. And for those of you that are not members of the community of faith, and particularly those that are, I feel relatively comfortable that the family would consider it a personal favor if you were to keep them in both your thoughts and in your prayers. 
bottom of the hour break. When we come back, election day across America, what does it say about us that we still don't know in many instances what the results are? We'll talk about that when we continue the Thursday edition of the Clarence Bug Show only on the Pelican. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com your favorite season is back, and now's the time you can score savings at the Team Automotive Group. You can sell your vehicle to us, and we'll pay you top value. Or buy here and get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Score VIP service and save at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Hi, I'm Katie, Operation Manager here at Old School Barbecue. We're excited about all of the changes here at Old School, and we'd like to invite everyone to come out and enjoy some delicious barbecue at Old School Prices. We feature brisket, chicken, ribs, sausage, and the Boss Hog Pulled Pork Sandwich voted best deal in town. We also have live music Friday and Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. 10655 Corsi Boulevard. We can't wait to see you. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Cot spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to the Thursday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. It is a couple days after Election Day. And I understand that I have a tendency at times to wear my America and my Louisiana on my shoulders. Chalk it up to my life experiences. As a man of color in a country that at one point considered me only three-fifths of a human being, not capable of learning, earning, whatever, I've got a vested interest in what happens in this country and the changing slash failing of certain time-honored institutions. As the child of a military veteran that spent 27 years wearing the uniform of the United States Army, I get it. I understand. Having grown up, born overseas, living overseas, living the military life, I understand not everyone had an, a life experience similar to mine. And as a result, I, I don't make any apologies for it. It is what it is. 
my appreciation for law enforcement and the military is probably higher than most other, quote, regular Americans. That being said, the older I get, the more I appreciate the electoral process and all that it entails. Maybe it's because at one point in my country's history, people that look like me couldn't vote. So now that we have the opportunity and the right to vote, I am particularly perturbed when the system does not operate the way it is supposed to. Last night, as I'm preparing for the show today, and I'm looking at the number of places in our country where election results are still up in the air, I had to ask, how is it that in our nation's history, with one exception that readily comes to mind, I remember going to bed on election night and knowing who was the winner and who was the loser. Now, maybe it was a bit of naivety on my part to think that it will always be this way. Maybe I was naive in thinking we're the most technologically advanced society on planet Earth. Certainly, we can do something as simple as this. I mean, after all, every other election day, at the end of the day, you go to bed, you know who won and who lost. So it's not as though this is something we've never been able to do. It's quite the opposite. We've always gone to bed election night, sometimes earlier than others, sometimes later than others. But we knew at the end of the night who won and who lost. So how is it in recent memory we're no longer able to do this. Certainly, at this point in our country's history, we have access to and are more technology savvy than any other time in the history of this planet. I mean, we all walk around now with a computer in our pocket that at the press of a couple of buttons can access all the knowledge that mankind has amassed in the history of our species. And yet, over the last couple of election cycles, we can't tell the American people at the end of the day who won and who lost. This is troublesome, y'all. This is bothersome. This is very telling that the country that is considered the most technologically advanced on the planet, all of a sudden now, we can't tabulate votes on election night with any degree of certainty. Marty, help me out. Shakespeare from Hamlet, right? <laughs> Something's rotten in Denmark. My crack research team figured that out. Wasn't Marty by the way it happened to be a guy that was that guy yeah happened to be here at old school barbecue uh heard me say it and i saw him pull his phone out yeah shakespeare from hamlet something's rotten in denmark y'all and i guess it wouldn't be so bad if there weren't stories like <laughs> in alaska we will not know, according to Alaskan elections officials, we won't know the results of the congressional elections for the state of Alabama for another two weeks. Then there's the case in Pennsylvania where voters there re-elected a dead state representative. 
State Representative died almost two months ago and was reelected. Now, apparently the people in Pennsylvania have two things going. One, they believe in making a sentimental statement. Whatever that statement may be, they decided to make it. But two, apparently the people in Pennsylvania are flush with taxpayer dollars because since they re-elected a dead state representative, that means they're going to have to pay for another election to elect someone that hopefully is not dead. You know, one of the things that perplexes me as an American and as a human being, how it is that we have arrived at a point in time where we have access, instantaneous, cell phone, computer, access to all the knowledge that mankind has amassed since God put us on this earth. And for those of you outside the community of faith, since we came out the ooze in the muck and became humans. We now have access to more information than we've ever had. And yet, we are dumber than we've ever been in our lives. That is so perplexing. And for me, it's bothersome. Conventional wisdom would say, the more access you give people to information, the smarter they will become. Of course, now, that is not taking into account things like social media, a biased mainstream media, and your dumb friends. When you take all of that into account, I guess it's not all that surprising that while, yes, we have instantaneous access to all the knowledge that mankind has amassed since the beginning of time, and yet we are dumber now than we have ever been. And at some point, thinking people, rational people, have to ask, is this purely happenstance? Or is this by design? I worked for a guy. I'm not going to call his name. He might be watching right now. He knows I love him like a brother. But what he said was just utter stupidity. In our Monday morning meeting, used to be staff meeting every Monday morning before I go on air. And the boss was making this big pitch for our involvement in social media. So in front of the entire staff, he announces, you know what I do? The first thing I do when I open my eyes in the morning, I look at my Twitter feed. I knew right then I probably wasn't going to be working there too much longer. <laughs> the very first thing you do when you open your eyes in the morning is go to Twitter. <sighs> and yet. We have access to more information than ever. But this is where you choose to get your information from. <laughs> Says a lot about us as a society, y'all. I will leave to you to determine if what is being said about us is a good thing or a bad thing. But if you just simply look around at what we do as a country... These days, you know the answer. Real quick. Real quick. I only hope that Americans will be as dissatisfied with the fact that we still don't know. Two days after Election Day, who are the winners? Who are the losers? And listen, y'all. In, in, in the words of the late, great Dr. Isaac Patty Griggs, legendary band director of the Human Jukebox, understand me thoroughly. This is not about black. This is not about white. It's not about Democrat. It's not about Republican. It's not about gay. It's not about straight. 
It's not about religious. It's not about atheists. This is about our country, y'all. And at the end of the day, whether you are black, white, Latino, Asian American, whether you are Democrat, Republican, Independent, you deserve on election day to know who won the freaking election. It's not that hard, y'all. At least it wasn't up until a few years ago. Sadly, it will not change until black, white, Latino, Asian, until Democrat, Republican, Independent, until gay, straight, whomever, lets these clowns know we want this fixed and we want it fixed now. This is inexcusable, America. This is inexcusable. But at the end of the day, unless we let them know, nothing will change. Sad commentary. Truly sad. Final break of today's show. When we come back, we'll put that big old pretty bow on this puppy and wrap up. Today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Every great story starts with the rush of thrilling gaming action. Handcrafted flavors, eager to please. Getaways for some well-deserved me time. And rewards worth bragging about. If it's a story worth telling, it starts at La Berge Baton Rouge. What's your story? Treads and Care Tire Company announces its new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair with top-notch customer service. Treads and Care offers the convenience of shuttle service and pickup and delivery of your vehicle. You can also enjoy the comfortable customer area, complete with workstations, high-speed internet, and a complimentary coffee bar. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Treads and Care, the tires you need and the service you want. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontese.com. Sometimes life is wonderful. And sometimes it's not. Cherish the good. But always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private Healthcare is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now.
Welcome back for the final segment of the Thursday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. You know, um, life is a funny thing in that sometimes in the most unlikely of places, amongst the most unlikely of people, you find a lesson that makes you go, aha, I knew I was right about this. Day before yesterday, Tuesday, election day. And while many of you watching right now don't fully appreciate the day, for many of you it's because you never had to do anything to earn that right. Ever since you were born and been here, we've had the right to vote. But conventional wisdom would say, Older black people and older white people that marched with these black people to get them the right to vote. They appreciate voting a lot more than those who did not have to do anything to be granted that right. I, I made this analogy last week. Back in school when you got your first car. The kids whose parents gave them a car versus the kids whose parents made them work and save their money to buy their first car. Who do you think took better care of that car? I can answer that for you. <laughs> My late father, God bless him, had a way of teaching me lessons. All of his children. Very first car that I bought, not the first car I had because that was the hand-me-down car. The very first car that I paid for. I got caught doing something in that car I had no business doing. And no, I'm not going to tell y'all what it was. My father caught me. And at the time, I was working at the family grocery store, at Sarge's Grocery. My father made me park that car because he caught me doing something I had no business doing in it. I had to either ride my bike or catch the city bus to go to work at the family grocery store. Still had to pay the note, mind you. And as a young kid, freshman year of college, senior year in high school, there is no worse feeling on the planet than to pay the note on a car that you can't drive needless to say well let me say it this way I never got caught doing anything in the car after that that I had no business doing but it gave me an appreciation for earning something that I never would have gotten had my father said well look you can't drive the car. I'm going to pay the note. Uh-uh. Not Sarge. Sarge said, you can't drive it, and you're going to ride your bicycle to the family business to earn money to pay the note on the car. I remember that to this day, just like it was yesterday. But it taught me a lesson, y'all, that the things you have to earn are the things that mean the most to you. For example... Yeah. Did you see where it was announced this week? Brittany Griner has now been transferred to a penal colony in Russia to serve out the remainder of her eight-year prison sentence. And rest assured, y'all, a penal colony in Russia, it ain't like here in America. I did say penal. Yes, I did. Do you think out of all the people on the planet that appreciate, hopefully, a free society where you get to take part in electing the leaders of the future? Brittany Griner is probably now at the top of that list. How ironic that you chose to insult this country by taking a knee for the national anthem 
And now you're in a place where ultimate irony would be, I wonder if every morning in Russia prisons, Russian prisons, if they played the Russian national anthem, and does she take a knee there? I doubt it as well. I doubt it as well. Before we get out of here, won't be on air tomorrow, but tomorrow's Veterans Day. The day where we take the opportunity to honor those who served and were discharged honorably. It is something that for a kid who grew up in a military household is so near and dear to my heart that I can't begin to tell you what it means to me. Never served, but grew up in a military household. So I have an appreciation for what the military and veterans mean to this country. It is my sincere hope that if at all possible, on Veterans Day, call your relatives who served and just give them a thank you. If you see members of the military community out and about on that day, make it a point. Shake their hand. Give them an attaboy. Give them a pat on the back. Because all the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy today, while the root word of freedom is free, somebody paid the price, y'all. Somebody paid the price so that you and I could enjoy the freedoms and the liberties that this country affords us. And as a result, you and I are obligated to thank them for that service. It is something that um, is underappreciated in many circles. It is something that many people have no idea why we make such a big deal out of it. But for someone who lived that existence, for someone who is a part of this country now with the rights and freedoms and liberties because of the sacrifices made by these folks, I can never, ever say thank you enough. My time's up, y'all, and I got to go. But this day, <laughs> maybe more so than any other day in history, I give it to you. You know what? You're right. America, we are not perfect. But for this old boy's money, it's the best there is. And God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you do realize he loves you, right? And I hope you know that I do too. Best news you're going to get all day. There ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. We'll see you soon.